Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show where I talk about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the season finale of Titans, as well as the latest episode of Van Helsing. Like always, if I'm talking about something you want to listen to, you can always look in the description down below. I click the timer to start talking about each of the respective shows. So, for example, if you want to hear what I had to say about the season finale of Titans, you can skip to what I had to say about this week's episode of Van Helsing. But the first thing I'm going to talk about is the season finale of Titans, a great season finale a lot of interesting things went down in this episode so let's break it down well first and foremost obviously we've got the squad of rachel uh cory dawn and donna all going to try and you know stop the situation which we kind of got the insight full scope of what cadmus was up to I, it does seem like they were setting it up to be like oh watch us come in and save the day thing kind of like i thought but it's also because they were setting up the whole situation of selling connor it's like oh look at our model look at him completely under control what he's capable of doing i like the test she did she had him fired a gun at her which i i think that's almost like her narcissistic way to be like i have nothing to worry about i'm not in day like coming to tell you at least testing on someone else but she's so sure in her control over him i mean it works out because he fires the bullet he runs over grabs it and then i felt bad for the poor bastard it's like oh great phase two and everything it's like oh this is gonna be great and then like connor throws the bullet into his head i'm like oh the moment connor start looking at the bullet i'm like oh you poor poor bastard pretty gnarly way to kind of you know bite the dust but regardless while they're on their way to rescue him slade shows up because i was like oh i made a promise i'm gonna kill these titans i'm gonna kill these titans but lo and behold who shows up none other than dick in his new outfit and everything was like whoa is that dick and he's just dude hand-to-hand -hand combat with slade i even love the moment he pulls out his two electric staffs and just like the way like when he's pulling them apart like the electricity that kind of forms behind his back a little i don't know it just looks so epic and it's and because he's and you see him I feel like he always fought acrobatically, but I mean, to be fair, even Stewart had brought it up last episode that the suit, this new suit will allow him to kind of be a little more flexible, to kind of allow him to use his acrobatics more in combat. So you see that immediately with just like the flips and stuff he does. He's like a lot more agile in this suit because I feel like, yeah, he was agile in his Robin suit, but he was never like we never saw him really showcase like his some aspects of it but not to that extent like his movement was kind of very fluid and i thought that was kind of pretty dope just just and i think that's kind of a neat shift to show you from him as robin versus him as nightwing it's just like a little bit of a thing but i just thought that was kind of i mean it kind of makes the biggest difference all together but i just thought that was pretty neat um but um yeah him going toe to toe with slay being like i got this um but he start kind of losing on one hand but you know rose shows up and because for her it's like the titans are her family she made a choice because she spent enough time to them with them, despite the whole Jericho thing, she, you know, obviously she knew she was there on the kind of false pretenses. Yes, Jericho was kind of the reason for it, but as spending so much time with the Titans understanding them, it kind of made her get more insight to them, kind of realizing they're not as bad as her dad kind of made them out to be. And realizing, in all honesty, how much of a piece of crap her own father is, so she shifts size and her and dick work together to fight him which is pretty dope and in the end she's the one that deals the fatal blow which i thought that was interesting i was like it's slate actually dead i mean i felt like it would take a little bit more to kill him but to be fair i guess it's like their healing factor strong but they're not immortal like i guess enough certain if you do enough damage i guess like I don't know, because I guess they make it so that he recovers from broken bones and stuff like that, but his healing factor might not be, like, stupid, crazy strong. I mean, it's definitely, like, not crazy, stupid strong, considering the fact is his eye and Rose's eyes never come back, so it's not like you can regrow stuff. It just fixes what's already there, so if you deal a killing blow, it will most likely kill them, so. Well, to be fair, it's kind of just like, um, the Mirakuru for, um, Slade and arrow like because he that's how he lost his eye was the arrow in his eye i mean granted it didn't kill him but it would, could have if it wasn't for the miracle but it's kind of the same thing but before he died uh jericho entered uh into rose's body so i was like oh man that's gonna be an interesting dynamic with that character now like where rose is kind of both jericho and rose i, I think that's gonna be i think that's i mean once again not knowledgeable in the comic book so you know the deep history that is you know potentially rose's character so who knows if that's something that's traditional to our storyline or that's just something they're doing for this but that's pretty dope um i think probably going for it you probably see them having battles in their head or arguing being like no nah, like it's my time to like run the body because even jericho was like yeah this is going to take some like getting used to and stuff like that the new adjustments and everything but i think he was kind of like yo but the new costume is pretty dope you know the deck and everything so it's like 
Okay, so that's taken care of Slade. That's one antagonist off the uh, belt. But then, like, the next step is dealing with Gar, who's being controlled and attacking people. And you have Connor coming up there to deal with him. Um, I even re replacing this the S sigil with Cadmus. Got to get that branding in somewhere, right? So, obviously, no matter, no matter what form Gar is taking, even as a tiger, he stands no match against, like, someone who's half Kryptonian. So, pretty much easily dispatches him. But I love that you have Corey, uh, Donna, and Don there being like, all right, so uh, what do we do? And it's like, so what do we do? And then Corey's like, hey, Connor. And then you have Don being like, really? You're, hey, Connor, that was your plan? And Corey just shrugs. I just love the little comedic moments here. It's like, and Donna... Don is like, so Donna, go talk. It's like, why me? It's like, you know, you go ahead. She's like, fine, I'll go. Because I think if anything, it's probably the whole aspect of like, well, you are the only one technically with superpowers amongst the group. So, and she's up there. He's like, hey, Connor, you probably, you know, you've never actually officially met. Which I'm like, huh, that's interesting. You two have not officially met. That's interesting. Um, excuse me, but then uh, she was like, you know, it's like, you know, you're part Superman. So come on, you, you know, kind of. Uh, Oh, right, because it's like, that's what it was. Because I was trying to remember what she said. It's like, you're, part, you're Themyscirian, he's Kryptonian. There's some common ship there, so you should be the one to talk to him. But uh, she was kind of reaching out. It seemed like, hey, she might have been reaching out. I'll even love that she turns back to the others and give them a thumbs up. And they're like, all right, keep going, keep going. Uh, but didn't go that well. So he ends up hitting her, and she's like, yeah, okay, that really hurts. I was like, you shouldn't have done that. Or and they get into a fight. I'm like, yeah, to be fair, like, Superman and Wonder Woman could easily go toe to toe, so it makes sense that Wonder Girl and um, Superboy would go be able to go toe to toe, especially both of them not being the full, her being half Themyscirian, half human, him being half Lex Luthor, half being human, but the other half being Clark. So uh, it was a pretty dope to see them kind of go hand in hand. But I mean, still, I think that Kryptonian side of things. I mean, you're borderlining some god level stuff there, which obviously that kind of tips in the same lane as. Wonder Woman, not necessarily sure that necessary, because Amazonians are like, Don, Diana's situation is obviously very different from every other Amazonian, her, because of, well, I don't know if that's true about Wonder Woman across all continent, I know in the movies, they made her part God, but like, just an Amazonian, for a Themyscarian in general, kind of has their superhuman strength, so they're definitely like superhuman, but it's just like, that Kryptonian angle kind of gives you the little bit of a leg up, so... All that's going down. Obviously, Rachel is trying to talk to Gar, and luckily, she's able to use her powers um, to kind of pull him back in. And um, I love that at the same time, Hank shows up, and he's like, he smashed it. Well, what was it? Uh, Car no, Corey ended up hitting. Uh, it's like. Uh, don't do this, it's a, what was it she was saying, like, you'll regret this, and she punches him one time and gets a good punch, and I was like, hey, oh, I was like, okay, I was like, I didn't expect you to be able to do that, and then she hits him again, but punches his chest, and it does nothing, I'm like, okay, so I guess she had a little spike of superhuman strength, and she's like, okay, I regret this, he starts strangling her, Hank tries to attack, and she starts getting strangled, and Don's like, why are you, Hank, what are you doing here? Um, which has an interesting thing to talk about. The fact is that uh, Corey is losing her powers like that. I didn't realize like how deep that ring, because I think you, I kind of forget just because you mainly see her using her firepower that you, I think it does slip my mind of like, right, she has, she is superhuman. So like for one, uh, she has superhuman strength plus healing. It took Rachel healing her because of her powers kind of fading. But um, luckily, uh, Everyone working together was kind of able to take down Connor after Rachel was able to bring Gar back. Uh, she went and connected Dick and I wonder if it technically the the combination of that trio that kind of worked. Like maybe the last of truth maybe probably made that a little. I mean, it kept him bound, but I wonder in some level did that help? Probably not. It probably was just purely to bind him, but I wonder if it kind of ran deeper than that. But regardless, um, I love that. Um, obviously, at the same time, Mercy uh, is running her deals and everything, but Bruce shuts that down. I'm like, and he's so cocky. He's drinking tea and everything. He's like, uh, denied. Obviously, I'm paraphrasing, but I love that. It's just, I was like, oh no, like, smug guy behind the computer. I don't know why. I just, I like that look on Bruce. But um, luckily, Rachel connecting Dick to um, Connor's mind was able to, you know, reach him. You know, I think, especially after everything. Uh, Dick has been through, like, it made him, um, 
kind of the perfect candidate to kind of reach out, you know, with what, you know. And also, I, I did, I've just skipped over it, but I love he's like, uh, looks like things are getting pretty, uh, getting pretty fucking ugly, is what Hank had said. And Dick was like, you ain't got nothing to say about the costume. And uh, Hank being like, I already did, and laughing. I'm like, I love that. Uh, busting ball was even in the middle of battle. I love it. But um, when it was all said and done, though, um, you have him reaching into um, Dick reaching into Connor's mind and being able to pull him out of the darkness. And once again, like I said, I think it's and, and I think it was very symbolic because obviously Dick representing the totem pole for the being at the top of the totem pole in this or rather you maybe you can think of him as the bottom of the totem pole kind of the foundation of this team and for him and like i said after everything that he's been through stuff he's been dealing with not just within the confines of the first and second season of the show but also just what he's been dealing with and all this time like that darkness that even him being able to help connor find his way to the light i thought was pretty dope um and Connor was able to kind of come back uh, and went after Mercy, who was trying to get away. And I love Corey punches uh, her in the face and be like, this is for Lex Luthor. And punches her. And she's like, ow. It's like, oh, not having superhuman strength sucks. Which, uh, Mercy did get a call from Lex. He was not too happy about that. I guess this was all part of his plan. And I was wondering if this was just Mercy's little thing. But I guess it's like, no, she's not going to do anything without Lex's uh, call. So... Either he was disappointed because, hey, this was a deal you said it was going to go down easily and you screwed it up. Well, you also lost me my prized possession in one of my experiments. Or maybe it was a situation of she did do this on her own. I highly doubt it, but I guess that's still uh, a possibility. But it's like, dude, they kind of all walk away from this and it's like, you know... Connor's looking like I did this, but you know, for Dick, it's like the fact of the matter is, you're you're part of the Titans despite everything because this this is your home. He had told him that earlier and everything, and I thought that was kind of beautiful to see them all standing together. Uh, Don returning that little girl's toy, but the thing coming down, and Donna sacrificing herself like that because once again, she is part human, so it's not like she's invulnerable. So she was electrocuted in the process, and that sucks. It's just like. Just when they win, they stop all the bad guys, something like this happens. And, you know, the the guilt kind of floats all around everyone. Because obviously for Dick, it's like, the fact is he blames himself because he drew Donna back into the Titans. But Bruce had to remind him, it's like, you can't tell, you know, you know how strong Donna Troy was. Like, the fact of the matter is, she would never do anything that she didn't herself want to do. So the fact that she was here helping you, it's proof that that's where she wanted to be. You know, and obviously, you know... Dawn blames herself because it's like she sacrificed her life to save me. You know, Gar blames himself because it's like because of just everything I got mixed up in all of this. Which even Dick's like, that wasn't on you. That was on me. Because I left you. You tried to piece the Titans back together and it was my fault because I left that on you. I should have never done that. I should have been here. But once again, he was kind of wallowing in his own you know, self-pity and everything. So, um, there was that. Um, obviously, there was a comp... Well, I did like the conversation between Bruce and, you know, Dick about the whole situation, him giving him a little bit of advice. And I like that the fact of the matter is, I, I like that little statement from Bruce where it's kind of like, you know, take advice from someone who, you know, you have to kind of, you know, take this advice from someone who doesn't really know much about having a life, which is like, yeah, I, I thought that's, it's interesting to hear that from Bruce because Bruce is probably amongst any of the superheroes has the least of a social life because even his social life was always just a front for Batman. It's like, you know, once again, the whole conversation of Batman is who he really is and Bruce Wayne is the mask, that type of situation. But I love Dick being like, no, but you do all right for yourself. He's like, really? It's like, yeah, he talks about the fact is that like, I didn't appreciate it at the time, but after everything I've been through now, like I do recognize that you did the best you could, that you basically gave me why you took me in in the first place. And he's like, oh, and it's like, yeah, you took me in to give us both what, something that neither one of us had, a family. And I was like, oh, I thought that was, you know, I thought that was kind of beautiful in its own right, that whole, you know, situation. But also the best advice, obviously, it's like, the fact is, all of you are going through a very bad situation right now. You just lost one of your own and you're all grieving. In moments like this, 
don't turn inwards. That was the problem in the beginning. Like, no one wanted to talk. You guys didn't confide in, like, you all, you in particular turned inwards. You bottled that all up. You dealt with it on your own. The fact of the matter is, be there for everyone else when they're grieving. And obviously, he was there for Gar, who's going, what he was, you know, kind of going through. Then there's a the Hank and, um, Don situation because for him he's like I'm sorry the fact of the matter is yeah I said what I said but the fact of the matter is I didn't remember you know because he was so focused on like the bad and everything that had gone down he didn't focus it wasn't until now he focused on the good that they actually did together which Don was like she doesn't think that there can be a Hank and Don anymore but he goes what about Hulk and Dove you know it's like now, what that necessarily means for them going forward, I don't know. That's going to be complicated considering their history and just kind of putting that aside and just being like, because I guess it's like because them as Hank and Dawn, there's too much there. And I, I think it's like because it's all too much connected to their own trauma that maybe they can push that aside and let Hank, I mean, Hulk and Dove kind of stand on their own and represent something and not kind of bringing their own situations into it. I, I don't know. That's kind of how I ran into the situation. But I'm, I'm interested to see where, you know, that, you know, side of things kind of go. Obviously, you know, they send Donna's body back to Themyscira and you have... Uh, Rachel going as well because with her powers growing and stuff like that she feels like she can do something which I'm like oh you want to try and bring her back I kind of worry about that because obviously her powers yeah because even she was like yeah things are kind of getting weird her powers are kind of getting a little beyond her and stuff like that so it's like maybe she can do something but part of me is like that's going to turn into something catastrophic you just get the inkling but Whatever the case may be, you know, it's like, I'm going to miss having you around, but do know that your room's always going to be here. You are, this is your home and everything. So, um, we even saw Jason, who showed up at the funeral, because, like, despite everything, I think, he, you know, he wanted to show his respects, his, uh, you know. So, I'm curious to see what that means. I doubt that's him going back to Bruce's side. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't, but I think he's got kind of a lot to kind of figure out on his own, too. So, I think... Dick is just going to give him his space and allow him time to grow. So I think that's what that potentially means. We'll kind of have to, you know, ultimately wait and see. But I thought it was kind of neat to kind of see everyone gathered around the table. It's like like a, as a family. Then we got some interesting things where like Corey's like, yeah, thanks for everything with you showing up and bringing us together. It's like, he's like, I have no idea what the hell you're talking about. Which Don and Corey are like, wait, what? That wasn't, that wasn't, Dick? that wasn't Bruce? And it's like, wait, do you think Rachel? She created that uh, because that's what I kept thinking. Cause I was like, I thought it was weird that like I was like, oh, so it's just Bruce who did all this. I thought that was interesting. Cause I was like, I was like, well, I guess I mean he has the money and resources and connections to make something like that happen. But I just thought, huh? I was like, oh, I guess so. Which you know, I guess that also explains like. I mean, that brings in the question the whole Dick situation too. Like the Bruce he kept seeing was that his subconscious or was that at first in like episode seven was that his subconscious but subsequently that was Rachel in his head maybe I don't know what to kind of really 100% make of that especially because now it's like wait because now Corey's like okay it's weird I'm losing my powers but now Rachel's powers are manifesting in a different way I mean to be fair we saw inklings of this in season one when she was kind of reaching out and getting inside of people's heads it's not like that's that strange but I guess it's like on such a large level being able to get inside of people's heads like that I think I mean we saw her dad being able to do it, so I guess it's a little bit of that Trigon kind of rubbing off on her, kind of like some of those powers that might have more so been his, or at least were more developed with him, are now developing in her type of situation. That's just kind of interesting to see. And now that's probably, like again, set, once again, setting up like, you know, her becoming Raven and everything, and probably like what that means for her powers. Like, because that was something that's still kind of been a background thing. It's been part of the story but it's never been a main focus this season it was just popping up here and there so i think going forward especially if she's trying to bring donna back that might become like i said a thing but we'll see you know what ends up becoming that because i think it's going to be that thing of like once she starts tiptoeing in that down that lane of like crossing the boundaries just the, uh, crossing the boundaries between life and death might kind of cause some a balance to be broken and that might cause some evil to be unleashed maybe that'll be directly connected to her in the sense that her powers will kind of grow in this crazy manner because of that or something i don't know what to kind of make of that, that that's definitely going to be um interesting but um and i did like what you know uh dick had said about the fact is them all gathered around and it is kind of interesting like they're all here 
because of just kind of the fucked up families that they come from, you know, because for him, you know, he always kind of kept a distance because he thought, you know, just because of the messed up, because literally everyone in that table comes from a messed up family situation. Obviously, we know Donna, we know Don and Hank's uh, situation, obviously Bruce and um, Dick's family situation, Corey's currently dealing with her twisted family situation connor coming from the background he's come from garb similar case you know him in the doom patrol situation and you know so i just think it is a neat element of when you actually break it down and think about it. it's like yeah each obviously can't forget about rose's extremely complicated situation um which i'm curious to see like what that means going forward too like you know um well, once again, because we never got insight in, about Rose and her family, so it's like, at least, you know, Jericho's mom is still around and everything, but what about Rose's family? We've never kind of got too much into that, but regardless. Um, but yeah, they've all kind of, but like, them all come, like, in them, this has become a place of strays, and when the strays all end up coming together, like, they're all people who believe, you know, who are heroes who believe in justice and doing the right thing. And that, you know, I don't know what the future holds for us, but the fact of the matter is to have this right now, you know, I, th I just thought that was kind of a beautiful moment. And them all cheering and cheering and drinking her favorite drink. And it's like, oh my God, that's what she's been drinking all this time. You know, I thought that was like very symbolic and everything, especially because obviously like, you know, there's some silver lining in the back of my head where I'm like, eh, you can think of it like afterlife sense of like, she's with, you know, um, Aqualad now, but, you know, still, but then, they're like, oh, there's trouble, and then, like, everyone's still sitting there, kind of, like, not sure what to do, Don gets up, and is like, what are you guys waiting for, and Bruce tells Dick, is like, yep, that, there's the answer you've been waiting for, about, like, you know, what the future holds for him, and it's like, yep, they're still the Titans, and getting that shot at the end, where they're all walking down the street, I'm like, yeah, you can't help but lose your mind a little bit, seeing that, it's like, hell, yeah, you know, they've kind of technically lost two Titans. I mean, I guess if you technically think about it. Well, because Rachel's gone and obviously Donna's gone. But I guess if you go even further back and think about the fact that Aqualad's gone. But still, they've got two mem new members that being obviously Connor and Rose. You know, so it's like, hell yeah. They really see the, uh, the Titans. You know, what's in store for them going forward. It's kind of a cool thing to just like, yeah, like they kind of they're done battling, especially Dick. He's still he's done battling his past. I think there's still going to be a lot pulling away from this finale that they're definitely going to be dealing with going for. I don't think it's all 100 percent fixed, but I think it is them taking those steps. I, it might it might be, but I still feel like there's going to be some lingering issues, definitely on Gar's part, definitely on Connor's part, because still dealing with the duality of like, yeah, being half Lex Luthor, half Superman and Gar dealing with everything that he went through even though it was you know it wasn't him that he was being controlled so there's that side of things and then there's a little thing set up at the end that's the same family that donna died saving right and it's like oh you know it was just like i was like okay what's about to happen here is she gonna be revealed to be some villain or something like that technically uh it seems like basically uh black fire has infected her like i, I think it's some kind of probably technology much like when she took controller for days but this situation is different because she, i guess it's just more so like it's a full-on like projection of herself over the lady's body or i guess she infected it and turned the woman's body into herself which i guess that woman's dead and now which is the worst time because it's like well black fire is here with all her powers most likely and literally an entire army and you know to kind of come after starfire because like well you know, Corey basically kind of declared a war on her, so that's about to turn into a civil war situation for Tamarin. Um, now, also, Corey's missing her powers and what that means, how she plans on getting them back, like, what's the root cause of her losing her powers. I think it's like a, you know, uh, subconscious thing, like it's a psychological thing, but we ultimately we'll have to, you know, wait and see what becomes of that. Titans has been renewed for a third season. Obviously, I'm very excited to see what they do with season three. Obviously, mostly everything's kind of been dealt with, obviously, with the exception of what we're setting up at the end there. So it seems like we're setting Blackfire um, up to be potentially our main antagonist. Who knows who else might kind of get mixed in that fold. But I, I'm, I'm curious to see what that ends up becoming. Um, especially like what this means for Corey, especially because it's like, well, she's working with the Titans and everything and dealing with Blackfire means going back to her world. Does that mean the Titans will go with her? We're we getting a little intergalactic next season. Maybe, maybe not. I I'm curious to ultimately see where that all ends up 
taking us, you know, and especially once again, what that whole Rachel storyline potentially is going to be like, is she going to be able to bring Donna back or not? What's going to happen in that lane, especially because they've set it up the whole thing of like, yeah, her powers are definitely growing and taking on weird forms. What that necessarily means, we'll ultimately kind of have to wait and see. And especially it's interesting that the timing is happening like that, where it's like, oh, I'm losing my powers at the moment. She's kind of gaining strength. Maybe there's some correlation there. Maybe not. <laughs> correlation, Corey me making a stupid observation and pun regardless i'm very excited to ultimately see what they end up doing with season three and now moving on to this week's episode of van helsing a lot of interesting things went down in this episode so let's break it down well first and foremost we find out what happened to violet it turns out she ended up getting taken by some human fight club interestingly enough which is crazy to think about something like this exists in the apocalypse there's even it's even being live streamed somewhere so there are people watching it and it's like oh there's no one out there but it's like oh yeah there's people out there so it's like i guess like rich and powerful because he'd even suggested like oh like uh to do darius which i don't know where i recognize that actor from i've seen him in something and i can't place it or remember where it was but uh, regardless uh, he's trying to tell Violet oh there's a place out there that's safe which the only place that we've ever known to be safe in this series was Denver but now I guess you're saying that there's more there's other places which we'll get to that later on but uh, I thought that was kind of an interesting thing to kind of think about because it made it seem like it was BS but then he's talking about the fact is there are people watching so it was also interesting because her first opponent ended up being the big show I think uh, which is interesting, uh, not unless I'm mistaking him for someone else, but I'm pretty sure that was him, right? Uh, which is interesting because he was in an episode of Happy, so like the sci-fi connection there is just kind of interesting. Uh, I mean, it kind of makes sense wrestling-wise and stuff like that, at least you know in the past. But regardless, going on a bit of a tangent, uh, very kind of, well, he's going by the name Carnage and everything. And I love, for one, I'm skipping over it, but she met Julius and everything. I'm like, ah! I was, I had a feeling, I was like, oh, she's going to run into someone. She, well, I was like, is she going to run into Axel or something like that? Is this what happened to him? It's like, nah, uh, he's, she runs into Julius. So it's like, of course you meet the person uh, you'd know. So I thought that was kind of a pretty dope. It turns out that basically this is kind of where he's been. I was, cause I was wondering, I thought he'd end up meeting up with Vanessa and Jack, but he never did. This is why, cause he ended up getting captured. And so, yeah, like I said, it's a fight club and he's giving her advice on how to fight and it, against this big guy. And ended up kind of using his size against me and ended up stabbing stuff. It's actually super sad. Like, it's not like a, yeah, she won. It's kind of like a, oh, she won. Because he's up there saying, like, oh, you promised you, if I won, I'd be able to leave here. And for my family's sake and everything. It's like, jeez, that's heartbreaking. It, it seemed like, oh, he's some, like, blood rage D-bag who loves fighting and loves killing. I mean, at least during a fight, he's like, oh, I'll make it in, you know, you won't suffer, I'll make, I'll kill you quickly or something like that. But you think, you typically look at that as like, oh, that's like that tough guy, look, oh, I'm so unbeatable, I love to kill, I love to fight, that that was his thing of like, it sounded like a villain thing, but it's like, no, it seems like there might have been some sympathy behind that in the sense that he was like, no, I'll kill you quickly so you don't have to suffer because I'm not in this for the enjoyment and the pain, even though it looked like he was, he was in this for saving himself and his family and it just kind of makes you go, oh, that sucks. But obviously Violet wouldn't take his head, so they took his head for her anyway, so that, I don't know, that was just kind of a heartbreaking situation. At the same time, that's all going down. We have Axel and Jack uh, meet, meeting each other. I thought it was so interesting. Like, he's following the compass and everything. He's like, wait, what? So he goes back and it's like, whoa, 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 whoa. And it's like, wait, where's Vanessa? It's like, wait, how do you know Vanessa? It's like, you know, and it's like, oh, dude. And it's like, why is this point to you? What happened? To, like, who are you? It's like, I'm her daughter. And even he's like, wait, but, but what? Uh, so that was interesting. Uh, that, And I even love that kind of like heart to heart moment they have and everything. It's like, we'll find your sister. And Jax is like, damn right. And he's laughing because he's like, yeah, you're, you're most likely her kid. Because that's kind of like, you know, because it probably reminds him of like Vanessa. I mean, throughout the entire series, but probably more so when he first met her and, you know, really got to know her in season one. When she was so desperate to find Dylan. She was so steadfast. And it doesn't matter what you tell her. She was so determined to find Dylan. It didn't matter. I think he probably sees a little bit of that it's like the fact of the matter is he was like i didn't know her as well as i thought i did in the sense that he didn't realize how much of a burden she was carrying, like what she really was at the time because obviously that's something that's heavily evolved over the series because at first it's like oh she can turn vampires back 
into humans. The fact of the matter is she's got some supernatural abilities, but obviously that's grown and mutated into something else. She became something else, you know? So he obviously he didn't know her backstory of like, you know, what made her that way that basically black tech well made her like that you know and now knowing that she's got two other daughters out there who are much like that and I thought it was kind of interesting of him being like you know the fact that she always tries to do the right thing but obviously like you know there's always kind of like pain along that road because obviously you know he's looking at Scarlet Sword and remembering just you know it's not always the easiest thing of just kind of like the fact is you know people kind of had to be sacrificed to kind of put her on the path you know like obviously like they had their complicated relationship for a while because of the whole Scarlet situation, but still, I don't know, I just thought it was pretty, you know, dope and everything and them talking, and I love, like, it almost seemed like Jack was trying to kind of get more out of him, and like, oh, she's like, oh, we were just getting started, you know, kind of in this conversation and stuff like that, so I, I don't know, I thought that was kind of a neat thing, because it's like, what are we planning on doing, we're planning on, like, you know, uh, it's like, did you see the dark one? Which I'm curious, you know, it didn't seem like Jack explained like what the dark one situation was like, but I'm curious to see what that's going to be like when inevitably like, uh, Axel ends up meeting her and stuff like that. I'm curious what that whole uh, situation is going to, uh, be like, so. And I love, I was thinking those stories were going to stay separated, but it's like, nope, those two, ep those two stories folded into one and I loved it because you have Axel and Jack uh, tracking down uh, Violet, who is obviously, you know, entering the pit with Julius because this is their plan to kind of, you know, kind of break out and everything. So I, I also like, you know, the fact is everyone's kind of like being filled in about everything that went down. Julius learning everything. Axel's learning everything about Vanessa and just everything that, you know, Jack and um, Violet had learned. But I love it. it's like, all right, it's like Jack wants to rush in there. It's like, no, 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 come on. We're going to come up with a plan. Once again, a little bit of that hot headedness that is Vanessa. You know, you can kind of see that in Jack. Uh, I mean, to be fair, you definitely see it in Violet, too. Um, I feel like, well, to be fair, I feel, when you actually think about it, I feel like Violet, it's kind of hard to say because Violet, I feel like she flips between being kind of hot headed, but she seems a little more even tempered than uh jack does at least at least to me maybe that's not the case but it just i don't know she seems a little more even tempered uh, like you know but regardless i love it. it's like okay axel's like you know he's trying to come up with a plan she's like any day he's like all right, all right it's like okay we do this we do that and then it's like nope ivory and scab show up and start killing people and he's like all right new plan he wipes away the plan that he was writing on the dust of the car Let's follow them. I love that. Just ended up being a plan. I was like, how serendipitous in a very messed up way. And follow them through the trail of dead bodies and everything. And while, you know, uh, you have Julius and um, Violet fighting and everything. And obviously, it's like, I, was like, I, I figured their plan was like to kind of hurt each other. Well, at least hurt Julius enough. Because obviously, he can rapidly heal. But they don't know that yet, right? So... I figured as much, and as like her leaping off his back, I was like, "Yo, are you about to like straight up leap up to Derek?" Oh no! But you're sure as hell striking down that guard, and they quickly take down everybody else. Which, to be fair, a lot of the other guards are already dead because of Scab and Ivory. Which is like, "Hey, let's go after Darius." Wait, they show up, and obviously, you know, Julius is like, "I thought you were dead." He's like, "You know what? Nah, I'm gonna fix that. I'm gonna kill you with my bare hands for you know, the whole Frankie thing." And it's a pretty gnarly knuckle drag out fight and everything. So I was, I legitimately, I kept being scared multiple times that Julius was about to lose his head. I was like, oh, don't tell me this is how it happens. So I was like, no. I was, because especially because I was like, please don't let him lose his head to scab because that would suck, you know, just after everything. But for him to kind of finally get his revenge against Scab, it was like, oh, that was so good. Especially because, like, Scab is one of the few OG vampires from season one still. Like, with the exception of Julius, like, Scab's the, like, runt of the litter that just managed to survive everything over the course of the series. So I thought that was kind of uh, impressive. But, uh, yeah, like, it's like, go ahead, say the words I want you. He's like, never. He's like, oh, I know you've never seen him. And just pulls all the way through and chops his head off. It's like, oh, my God. I never would have thought that would have happened. It's like, once again, it's like, Scab's been there the entire time. I'm also forgetting the fact, don't look over the fact that, like, Violet and Ivory are going at it, you know, 
uh, sword fight. And I even love that dude who worked in the cameras being like, oh my god, this is so cool. I love that he heard gunshots and stuff like that. It's like, I'm not getting up. So it's like, okay, I mean, I guess you're like, yeah, I'm just going to sit here and do my job. I'm not going to get too worried about it. Just like, who are you, dude? You're just some like random dude working in cameras and stuff like that. I love it. But uh, Ivory, uh, she got pissed, and she went after Julius, and I was like, oh, God, this isn't good, because I thought she was about to slice his head off, because I love that, like, Axel's like, Julius? He's like, Axel? He's like, I got you. He's like, no, no, I want to handle this myself. He's like, all right, good luck, good uh, bit guy. So that ends up going down, and just before Ivory can do anything, your girl Violet jumps in and bites. I was like, oh! I was like, wait, this is crazy. And then she starts vomiting, like, heavily. It's like green goop and stuff. I'm like, that's interesting. Because I was about to say, I was like, have we seen, I was about to say, is it because she's a day uh, walker? But I was like, no, we've seen day walkers get turned back, too. And, I mean, obviously, they spit up blood and stuff, but hers was, like, green. Like, what the hell was that about? Well, maybe because Michaela's awake, maybe that had something to do with it. But I'm like, or maybe that's just kind of representative of what she had eaten. Well, I don't know if we've ever focused on a day. Well, we've seen people turn, but they've never focused on it. Like, like I said, it was just she was spewing up green goo. So maybe it's just on top of being one of the sisters and that happening. I, I'm pretty sure like Julius would have never been happy if like uh, Scab had lived or whatever. But it's like Ivory has, and it's that whole thing of being a vampire amplifies the evil in you so when you actually go back to being a human you're not an asshole you're actually a decent human being most people before they became vampires it turns out we're decent people yeah they might have their complicated situations but more often than not we've yet to actually see in a series where someone turns back into a human and is just a complete another piece of shit i don't think that ever happens like it's i mean you know usually everyone's just kind of like oh they're thankful and it's like oh because it's like waking up from a uh, a, a lucid nightmare where it's like you've been awake for every step of the way and even Ivory's like oh my god she's like you know she's so like you know it's almost like she quickly got over like I was so heartbroken about Scab it's like nah forget him he was a terrible person he was a monster but I'm you, you know so it just kind of shows you that that affection was only because of the vampire because they were both twisted and evil so it you know that twisting and evil resonated but now that it's like no it's okay you know my human side doesn't feel anything towards him anymore. I mean, that's, I mean, I think that's also the thing, too. When you're human again, you feel for the first time, you know? So, you're no longer kind of the asshole you were as a vampire. So, I do like the, I like the army being built up again and stuff like that. Because that's something I've been talking about since season two, where Vanessa had her own little army of, you know... She had Doc, she had Phil, she had Julius, and obviously eventually Axel kind of, and now we kind of have that same thing again, but now it's kind of like uh, Julius, you know, and Vanette, well, uh, Julius and Violet, now Ivory, then there's Jack and Axel. Uh, once again, I don't think Phil's going to pop back in the story. I think what we saw in Phil's episode, that episode where he was reunited with his wife and son, I think that was him kind of bowing out the story i don't think we're, like i figured that's kind of what that was potentially setting up so but the thing like ivory's here and everything i'm like wow i would have never expected that i don't know i would have just assumed like you'd be dead like kind of like a stab situation i would have expected that i would have never i was like that's actually kind of a neat turn of like nope she got turned so them working together to shut um Darius down he's not dead so I'm curious what they're going to do with him are they just going to lock him up or like what you know so that was kind of interesting but uh what I really liked at the end obviously they were able to get the amulet back but um yeah Ivory being like yeah she serves the Van Helsing's now and everything it's like wow dude I think we might because you know it's like rather than taking a life you have uh Violet be like let's save a life which is interesting because that was kind of like Vanessa's motto so it's almost interestingly enough kind of passed on that legacy's almost been passed down to her children so that's i think that's kind of a neat element but um what i really like is like you know it's like okay so whoever's watching this you know you're sick and it's the end and we see the video get paused because from who's ever watching it it's like it turns out it's the president watching it so it's like oh now that's interesting it makes you wonder how much of the u.s government Oh, governments in general, but obviously we've typically focused on the U.S. here. Uh, how much of the government is still in that? I mean, it kind of makes sense because black tech, you know, like a lot of this stuff, like the military, black tech, that's all government, like, 
especially Black Tent was most likely government funded. So it's like, well, because even they were like, oh, the rumors of the woman who can cure vampires. So whatever Black Tech is up to, maybe certain people in the presidents, well, in the government weren't aware of what they were up to in Black Tech. Maybe some people were, some people weren't, which is interesting considering if that is the case, because obviously like everything with Willem, um, you know, Hanson, uh, him being part of Black Tech and everything, him being a part of this whole vampire thing. But it's so interesting to find out that there is some secret government. And it also plays into the fact is that, wait, there are secret places that people can be safe if the president is there. It's like, but who else is there? Is it like you have to be higher echelon government officials to kind of have somewhere, you know, to be? Like, how many places are there out there? Are there some scattered everywhere? Is it one central location? Also, the fact of the matter is, the fact is, it's also a little sick because that means the president was watching that. That means the president kind of, well, either that or someone she she knows was watching it. So, it ended up getting sent to her. Maybe they watched it for a reason, but part of me is like, were you getting your jollies off? Like, is that, was that your thing? Was that, it's like, oh, well, it's a boring apocalypse. Let's watch people kill each other. It's like, that's super twisted if that's the case. And I think that's heavily implying that, but it's like, that's super messed up that even the president isn't above kind of being caught up in all of this like that, you know? So the implications kind of run deep for what that potentially means going forward. I mean, that really gets you wondering about the whole situation of like, what role are they going to play in all this? What role have they played in all of this? Because obviously we know Black Ticket's been kind of had their hands in this vampiric pot for a while i mean obviously once again we see with the willem slash hansen situation of like it's all been for the purpose of raising the dark one as a president and everyone else even aware of that are they they're so like caught up in their own little communities where it's like the outside world no longer affects them i guess it's denver but maybe a more sustainable denver that doesn't work in the same lane because obviously there was because th- even like once again like black tech has the tech and resources that they have so they still have to be getting funding from somebody so that must mean that the president is still funding them but it must be something like willem uh willem and, uh slash hansen must not have ever reported anything to the higher so it's like oh i'm in my position so i'm not because that's why i kept wondering is like did he have to report to anybody higher up or not you know it, stuff like that kind of gets my mind wondering you know Currently, we have most of our characters together. The only person we're missing is Doc. Uh, we still don't know where Doc is, though. Like, that's still something that hasn't circled back in a while. But obviously, going forward, it's like, okay, so we got the vial. Now we just need to track down those three pages Dad was trying to tell us about. So I'm interested to see kind of what that ends up being. Obviously, they're a step closer to potentially, you know, finding a way to open a portal to get Vanessa out but then that also means bringing back the dark one but you know even jack was like now we're going to end this all once and for all but it's like will it be that easy i highly doubt it but it's definitely going to be interesting to see where our uh newly formed squad where things kind of take them going forward with all of this but really that's all i want to talk about so the next time we meet be happy be safe love light to the fullest and enjoy it good day and goodbye